Vivek Welcome Group for a news live on Channel I. Hello there, I'm Daphne Charles. And I'm Dushan Vaz. First, take a look at the headlines. Thousands of 500 persons, including opposition leaders and members of the Pradesh Sabhas of the Northwestern Province, joined the UPFA. A massive response for the rallies held under the patronage of the President. Kumaran Padmanabhan said that President Mahindra Rajapaksa is the only leader who provided liberation to the Tamil people. All arrangements have been made to hold a free and fair provincial council election on Saturday. A plan to destroy chemical arms of Syria within a period of one year. On to those and other stories in detail now. Today is the Binara Full Moon Poya Day, which has much significance, including that of the establishment of the Bikuni Sasanaya. Various religious programs were held in temples throughout the country today. It was on a Binara Full Moon Poya Day that Lord Buddha admonished Maha Prajapati Gautami and 500 Bikunis to establish the Bikuni Sasanaya. It was also on a day like today that the Vadna Jataka was admonished. The Poya Day Dhamma sermon organized at the Temple Trees was heard today as well. The Anunayak of the Malvata chapter, Venerable Nyan Goda Vijita Siri Thera, delivered the Dhamma sermon. Vatina Jeevitaya Baudh Pinnatung Hatiyata Apihama Dinama Nirantarem Age Karana Yankese Vasanamant Manushe Kuge Jeevitaya Deeratwing Beeratwing Suratwing Saha Saratwing Sampoonavetu Atiyaru Janad Petitumange Digukali in Jeevan Gaman Pilibano Kalpana Karanwita Ituma E Hamadiakma Daragan Nata Vasanavan Tuna E Dhiratwe Tulim Sartakati Kara Gaman Karamim Apirati Sielu Abiogyam Adadakwam Jayagrahani Krante Vasanavan Tuna The Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation broadcast per day programs throughout the day from the Sri Visuddharamaya in Varyapula. There were several Buddhist programs held at this Viharaya. A large crowd attended the community service program. Minister S.B. Navin and several people's representatives were also present. When President Mahindra Rajapaksa worshipped at the Temple of Tooth Relic at Sri Dalada Malika over this morning and received blessings. The President uh, also participated at religious rites at the Sri Dalada Malika. The President also observed the renovation works being carried out at the Sri Dalada Malikava. The President also met the uh, committee member of the uh, Malvata Baha Vihara when Rupati Bhattuave Medankara Thera and inquired about his well-being. The President also had cordial discussions with the devotees who had come to worship the Tooth Relic. Ministers Bandhul Kunwadana, Mahindyapa and the Diyabhata Dilapay Nilanka Dala also joined the President in these activities. Thank you. 
More than 1,500 activists of the United National Party, including former opposition leaders and members of Pradesh Sabhas in the Kurunagala district, joined the United People's Freedom Alliance and met the president. They pledged to give their fullest support to the victory of the United People's Freedom Alliance in the forthcoming provincial council elections. They came with Minister Johnston Fernando to the president's house in Kandy. They included the former chairman of the Udubad Dava Pradesh Sabha, BMSS Balasurya, the opposition leader of the Bingiri Pradesh Sabha, MPH Kularatna, opposition leader of the Yabahuva Pradesh Sabha, the former chairman of the Mahava Pradesh Sabha, R.M. Premadasa, the opposition leader of the Nikavarati Pradesh Sabha, S.A.C. Vijita Premalal, and 13 United National Party members of the Nikavarati Yabahuva, Varyapula Mahava Mavatagama, Hiriala Kurna and Katugampala Pradesh Sabhas. Another four former United National Party members of the Pradesh Sabhas and one JVP former Pradesh Sabha member also pledged their support to the President by joining the UPFA. Among those who met the President were more than 1,000 strong activists of the United National Party. Meanwhile, a group of United National Party stalwarts, including former United National Party Deputy Mayor of the Nurelia Municipal Council and the current member of the Nurelia Municipal Council, K. Chandra Sekaran also joined the UPFA by meeting President at the President's house in Kandy yesterday. The group included several members of the United National Party branch organizations and women's organizations. Venerable Balapitiye Panyantisas Thera, Ministers Professor G. L. Pedis, Bandula Gunavadana and Governor of the Central Province Tikiriko Bakadur were also present at this occasion. Massive crowds participated at the United People's Freedom Alliance rallies held in connection with the provincial council elections under the patronage of President Mahindra Rajapaksa. <laughs> The first rally of the UPFA was held at the Malika Piti grounds in Guru Nayakala in conjunction with the 62nd anniversary of the SLFP. Addressing the rally, President Mahindra Rajapaksa said that the opportunity of enjoying the fruits of democracy has been provided to all sectors of the society. The President said that the terrorism was eradicated and the people of the North have been given a democratic freedom to elect anyone that they desire. The second rally was held at the uh, Kengal Stadium at Digana in Kandy. The president addressing the rally said that the people who are contesting the election in the north have made proposals to divide the country. He said that as long as he is alive, he will not permit anyone to divide this country. <laughs> Addressing the third rally held at the Edward Stadium in Bautale, the president said that he will stand for the protection of all communities in the country. The president requested the people not to get misled by rumors and speculations. He said that he is always with them to protect them. A large crowd participated at the rally held at the Pundali Oil Stadium in New Aurelia. A large crowd also attended the rally held at the Chilo to ensure the victory of the UPFA candidates contesting at the northwestern province. 
The president addressing this rally held at the Putlam Urban Council ground said that it is hilarious to find that certain people who did not utter a word against the terrorist action of expelling Muslim people from the north coming forward today to protect the Muslims. The president said on the 19th of May that in 2009 that Sri Lanka abolished the status of minorities in the country and made everyone equal in status. He said that no one should tell him that there are minorities in this country. Large crowds attended the rally held at the Kuliapitya despite heavy rains. Janat Patima, Janatava gave three to go Shamaki, Kulia Pitya, Santan Valia, and Apia. The final victorious rally of the UPFA was addressed by the President and the city of Kandy. The president said that the people who got vote on the uh, 21st have a great responsibility to tell the international community that this is the decision of the hill country and this is the decision of the north west and we all are together as a one nation. The government has spent 19,740 million rupees for the development projects in the central province during the last six years. The number of projects implemented amounted to more than 9,000. And here is a short account about the Kandurata Navodaya. The Central Provincial Council spent 4,750 million rupees for the improvement of infrastructure facilities in the districts of Kandy, Nurelli and Mathale. For the development of the health sector alone, a sum of more than 800 million rupees has been spent. Hospitals of Nurelia, Teldenia, Dambulla, Mathale and Dikoya and Ayuva, the hospitals of the province, were de developed. The main hydropower plant of the country is also located in the central province. 85% of the electricity requirements of the province are fulfilled through Kotmale and other small power plants. The province has a road network of 2,244 kilometers. All these roads have now been developed at a cost of 3,220 million rupees. The construction of the 18 Bend Road, Katugastata Bridge and Rambada Tunnel Road are some of the huge development projects implemented by the government in the central province. 92% of the drinking water requirements of the province have been fulfilled at a cost of 120 million rupees. 2,140 million rupees have been spent for the improvement of educational facilities in the province. Computer centers have been established in 586 rural schools in the province. 80 million rupees were spent for improving the infrastructure facilities of people living on the estates. More than 200 tourism projects have also been implemented in the province at a cost of 300 million rupees. Environmental pollution in the historical temple of the Tooth Relic and in the city of Kandy has been minimized. The provincial council has given its maximum assistance for the religious and cultural revival of the province as well. Meanwhile, the elections for the uh, central, northern and northwestern provinces will be held on Saturday. 3,785 candidates are contesting for these elections under which 148 members will be elected for the three provinces. There are 4,363,252 persons eligible to vote at this election. Polling will be held at 3,712 polling booths. There will be 477 counting centers. The majority of voters are from the center province. It amounts to 1,889,557 from Kandy, Mathale and Nurali districts. 58 members will be elected from the central province for which 1,500 and 
17 candidates are contesting from 44 political parties and 24 independent groups. The northwestern province consists of uh, Kurunagala and Putlam districts. The number of voters amounts to uh, 1,754,218. 52 members will be elected from uh, 1,360 candidates contesting from 25 political parties and 23 independent groups. The number of registered voters for the uh, northern province is 719,477. The province consists Jaffna, Kirinochi, Mana, Vavnia and Bolutia districts. 906 candidates are contesting from 57 political parties and 28 independent groups. 38 members will be elected from this province. Meanwhile, elections for the central and northwestern provinces were held previously in the year 2009. The United People's Freedom Alliance obtained 668,743 from the northwestern province and 37 members got elected from the UPFA. The UNP obtained only 270,347 from the northwestern province. The UPFA obtained 650,203 votes from the Central Provincial Council elections and 36 candidates got elected. The United National Party got only 422,125 votes. The UPFA said that they are confident of getting more than the two-thirds from these two provincial council elections. It is for the first time an election has been held for the uh, northern province and the government ended the war in the uh, province and implemented a rapid development drive. The northern voters have mustered together to express their gratification to the government for this uh, gesture. The government says that as per the information received, it will be able to uh, win the northern provincial council election as well. There was warm and massive appreciation for the election rallies held in the northern province under the patronage of President Mahinda Rajapaksa. The reason for this was that the president addressed these rallies in the Tamil language. The Tamil people in the north, expressing their happiness about the president speaking to them in Tamil, commended his simplicity and the policy of equality. The president addressing the rally in Manna in Tamil said that everyone should get united devoid of ethnicity, religion or caste differences for the development of the country. The president said that all people of this country are equal. The government has provided all facilities to the people without any discrimination. He said that there is no need for segregation or communalism hereafter. The president addressing the rally in Nuralia, Pundiloya, said in Tamil that he is committed to provide protection to the Tamil people at all times. He said that it is his duty and responsibility to protect everyone in this country. He urged the people to unite as one nation. He said that their victory is his victory as well. Vetri, Ungal Vetri, Ungal Pilehaling Vetri, in the Naching Vetri. Addressing the Mullai Thiru Pudukudiripu rally in Tamil, the President emphasized that everyone in Sri Lanka are the children of one mother. The President said that he is their relation and friend. He said that he trusts them and wanted them also to trust him. Addressing the rally in Thalavakale in Nuralia, the president said in Tamil that the estate people are the backbone of this country. He said that they cannot remain like this every day. They should also get developed and the government is prepared to give them increased facilities. Kumaran Padmanath, alias KP, who was a far powerful person in the uh, Tiger Territories organization, said that President Mahindra Rajapaksa is the only leader who provided liberation to the Tamil people. He has uh, requested the uh, people of the North to support the United People's Freedom Alliance at the uh, forthcoming elections in the Northern Province. Mr. Padmanath has said that these uh, comments at a media conference held in Kirinochi recently. 
Pampa Yasel Raza and Padbanan, the Nadians, Kumar and Padbanan, the Nisa, former LTT leader who was in charge of the international activities. He has requested the Tamil people not to get misled by the false propaganda of the uh, TNA and support the president to build this country. For the Tamil people, it is a golden opportunity. You got a great leader, the only man, our president, he can solve this problem. He is honest and forward. If you saw your hand, if you saw the friendship, he will be friend. He can solve the Tamil problem. He has that caliber. We have to make understand. We have to build the trust with him. Don't listen to this old TNA lies. Commendations of foreign delegates have continuously been made about the expeditious development programs carried out by the government in the northern province after ending 30 years of terrorism. The foreign delegates who came to the country during the last four years understood the real position after visiting the northern province. During the past four years, the government has spent more than 300,000 million rupees for the development of the northern province alone. Roads, health facilities, electricity supplies, provision of drinking water facilities, transport services, educational facilities, construction of houses and improvement of infrastructure facilities were carried out under the Uttaruvasanthaya program. The UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon was also among the foreign dignitaries who traveled to the north after ending 30 years of terrorism. He commended the facilities provided by the government to the 300,000 people who were rescued from the clutches of terrorism by our security forces. Parliamentarians from 53 countries who attended the Commonwealth Parliamentary Union Conference in Sri Lanka also visited the northern province. The government sponsored that tour. Upon visiting the northern province, they commended the government for the services being provided in the province. Recently, a group of delegates, including the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Mrs. Navaneed and Pillay, also visited the north. They inquired about the conditions there from the people of the north and appreciated the peaceful situation prevailing there. The present Foreign Minister of Australia, Mrs. Julie Bishop, made a visit to the North in the month of January when she was the leader of the opposition of the Australian government. She was accompanied by a group of Australian MPs. Another group of delegates from Australia also toured the Northern Province in the month of July and all of them commended the government for the services being rendered. The British State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Alistair Burt, visited the North in the month of February and observed the development activities being carried out by the government. He commended the government for the measures being taken to uplift the life standards of the people of the north. Former Foreign Minister of India, Mr. S. M. Krishna and a group of delegates toured the north in the year 2010. They commended the development being carried out in the north and opened a consular office in Jaffna. Ministers Basil Rajapaksa, Professor G. L. Pires, Governor of the Province Major General G. H. Chandrasiri and several others participated at the inaugural function held for launching the 50,000 houses project in the north. A group of delegates who came to Sri Lanka in October 2009 also visited visited the North and commended the government's development activities. In addition to these, representatives of United Nations, international monetary institutions and several other countries visited the North from time to time for an understanding of the real situation in the North. Meanwhile, the lawyers' movement for the protection of the nation said that the attempts being made by the Tamil National Alliance to create a war in the country again should be defeated. Representatives of the movement emphasized that this fact at a media conference held in Colombo today. The movement's uh, lawyers pointed out that it has been confirmed that the statements being made by the TNA that the election manifesto violates the constitution. The media secretary of the Lawyers Movement for the Protection of the Nation, attorney at law Sagar Bandara, said if a candidate contesting for the provincial council election states that if they did not uh, get some uh, form of political authority when they will uh, take up arms, it is clearly a violation of the subclause number seven of the constitution. The basic right a person should get is the right for living. If the person were dragged to uh, the war in this manner, this human right will get violated in a huge manner. 
the president of the law is movement for the protection of the nation. Attorney at law Pradeep Silva said that he is earnestly requesting the Bilad mothers, brothers and sisters of the north not to get misled by the coming politicians and not to allow them to drag this country into war once again. A ferry service that can carry large-sized vehicles is being established between Jaffna and Nagadipa at a cost of more than 60 million rupees. Up to now, there was no facility to take buses or other large vehicles to Nagadipa. On a request made by the Ministry of Traditional Industries and Small Enterprises from the President, Mahinda Rajapaksa, the Road Development Authority has provided this facility. The ferry service will be used between Kurikatwan Jetty and the new Nagadipa Jetty. The ferry service can carry a load of 63 tons. Ministers Douglas Devananda, Nirmala Kutalavala and the Governor of the Northern Province, Major General G. A. Chandrasiri, attended the launching ceremony. The annual Chayat Festival of the Sri Vangedeshwara Mahavishnu Kovil of Dehivala was held this morning with the participation of a large crowd of devotees. The Chariot Festival was started on the 11th of this month with the cup planting ceremony on the same day. After the divine statue was brought to the COVID, the Chariot procession paraded the streets. The festival was organized under the leadership of the Kuru Kurl, Brahma Sri Chandra Kandan. Welcome back. Joining us now in the studios with a sports roundup is Chamindi Samarasekara. Over to you. Thank you, Daphne. Welcome to the sports news with me, Chamindi Samarasekara. The former heavyweight boxing champion of the United States, Ken Norton, has passed away. In a boxing fight held in 1973, Ken Norton severely assaulted Muhammad Ali and injured him. The 70-year-old Ken Norton died in Arizona Hospital by a heart attack. He was a former naval officer and became a professional boxing player in the year 1967. He retired from boxing in 1981. By that time, he had won 42 boxing matches. It is significant that Ken Norton also acted in the film Mandingo in 1975. And that's it on the news tonight. Thank you for joining us. Do watch again tomorrow night at the same time. Good night. <laughs>